let's get right to that Fox News alert. A state of emergency in the state of North Carolina. The National Guard rolling into Charlotte right now as a second night of riots turn violent. <laughs> Last night, uh, yeah, look at that. Four police officers uh, were hurt as nearly 1,000 riders took to the streets, throwing fireworks, looting stores, and blocking traffic. At one point, those riders tried to throw a reporter into a bonfire. Uh, police intervening to save the man. Well, good. Wow. But one protester is on life support this morning. Police say uh, that he was shot by another civilian. All of this chaos unfolding after this black police officer, Brantley Vinson, shot and killed 43-year-old Keith Lamont Scott. Now, police say they were warned that they warned Scott to drop the gun that he had. His family says he didn't have a gun. He was not armed, and they're speaking out against the police. Just know that all white people are and devils. And make sure you air that one. Air that Don't take that All down. white cops are devils and white people. Mm. Officer Vincent uh, is now on administrative leave. So a lot of tensions and uh, certainly a lot coming out of that incident. Absolutely. All right. Uh, so that's what's going on down there. Two minutes after the top of the hour, let's bring in Donald Trump. He's running for president of the United States. He's got a debate in a couple of nights, but he joins us live from somewhere in his empire. Good morning to you, Mr. Good Trump. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. So as you look at what's happened overnight and happened the night before down in Charlotte, what are your thoughts? Well, it's wow. Here we go again. It's uh, very sad. When you look at what's going on, it's very sad. It's very divided, our country. And uh, it's, uh, it's getting worse. So I'm not overly surprised to see it, but it's, uh, it's happening. Why do you think it's getting worse? It just seems that there's a lack of spirit between uh, the white and the black. I mean, it's, it's a terrible thing that we're witnessing. You're seeing it. Well, I'm seeing it. And you look at what went on last night in Charlotte, a great place, and uh, you just see it. There's a, there's, there's somewhat, and I, and I see it even going out. There's, there's such a lack of, there's a lack of spirit. There's a lack of something. Something's going on that's bad. And what's going on between police and others is getting worse. Mr. Trump, as a, what, would a, what would the message be of a President Trump uh, to these rioters, to the anti-police protesters? Well, it really has to be. You have to have law and order. At the same time, Pete, you have to have, you know, you have to have a certain spirit, a certain unity. And there's no unity. You look at the level of hatred, the, you know, the rocks being thrown and everything happening. It's so sad to see, you know, that this is the United States of America. I mean, it's so sad to see. But there's just no unity. There has to be a unity message somehow that has to get out. And it starts with leadership. You know what, um, Mr. Trump? There, don't you think there needs to be a dialogue, a dialogue between the police and the community that they help keep the laws in? You know, you can't just uh, roll up when there's trouble. You got to have a dialogue with the folks every day. Well, that's true. But if you look at Dallas, there was a dialogue. They prided themselves on dialogue and they were constantly talking and meeting and having community groups. And, you know, that was that was a pretty rough situation, to yeah. put it mildly, a terrible, terrible situation. And, uh, you know, so that sounds good. It sounds right. But there's something deeper than that. Mm -hmm. I was glad to know that you had a dialogue with um, hundreds of African-American community leaders. You had that yesterday. It was supposed to air last night. And then um, Han for Hannity for the town hall. Hannity didn't end up airing that because he was live on his show for two hours last night. So it's going to air tonight. We're all looking forward to seeing Good. that. But what was that dialogue like? Because um, it's important for, you know, it's easy for us to, to say what we need to do as white individuals. We're sitting on this couch. But what does the black community want from the white community? How can we work together as a country? Well, we went to Cleveland, and it was really beautiful. Pastor Darrell Scott, who's a great guy, and his, his church. And we had a tremendous group of people there. It was it was amazing. And uh, that's right. It's going to be, I guess, on Hannity tonight. It was going to be I last so, night. Yes, but sir. Unfortunately, this preempted it. But uh, we had a an amazing. It was an amazing uh, couple of hours that we spent. And I'll I'll tell you what. If something can happen, and it can happen fast, and it can happen. That's very good. But right now, it's not taking place. There was great love in that room yesterday. And. 
you know, you, you see pictures of it. You see it right now on, on the show. Mm -hmm. uh, there was tremendous. There was a tremendous feeling in that room. I mean, something can happen with the right leadership. I, I know. I, I read a report that uh, apparently there in that black church in Cleveland, you were asked what you would do about black on black crime. And you said maybe it's time to bring back stop and frisk. Right. And I saw that you sent out a tweet. Stop and frisk works. Instead of criticizing New York Police Chief Ray Kelly, New Yorkers should thank him for keeping New York safe. Why do you think stop and frisk would work? Well, Ray Kelly did a great job, and New York was not in a Chicago situation, but it was really in trouble. It was in bad shape crime-wise, and with all of the uh, shootings and everything. And it, it really, they, Rudy Giuliani did a great job as mayor. And they really, they really straightened things out with stop and frisk, and it was used... Uh, further by the next mayor of Bloomberg. And, and now they just, you know, recently, not so recently, but fairly recently, they stopped it. But stop and frisk worked. We had tremendous uh, shootings, numbers of shootings. Now Chicago is out of control. And I was really referring to Chicago with stop and frisk. They asked okay. me about Chicago, and I was talking about stop and frisk for Chicago. And where you had 3,000 shootings so far this year, 3,000 from January 1st. And obviously, you can't let the system go the way it's going. But I suggested stop and frisk. And some people think that's a great idea. And some people probably don't like it. But when you have 3,000 people shot and so many people dying, I mean, it's worse than some of the places we're hearing about, like Afghanistan, you know, the war-torn yeah. nations. I mean, it's, it's more dangerous. So. Well, it, it does sound, Mr. Trump, like uh, Chicago's going to add, I, I think yeah. I read, a thousand new police officers. Uh -huh. So you got more cops on the street, but unless you give them the tools, what mm -hmm. are they going to do? Yeah, no, I think Chicago needs stop and frisk. Now, people can criticize me for that, or people can say whatever they want, but they asked me about Chicago, and I think stop and frisk with good, strong, you know, good, yeah. strong law and order. But you have to do something. Well, it can't continue the way it's going. Will you explain what that is to my folks down in South Carolina that don't really deal with stop and frisk? What, what exactly is it, and, and what are the pros and cons? Well, there are different levels, and you have somebody coming up who's the expert on it. But, but basically, Rudy. they will, if they see, poss you know, they're, they're proactive. And if they see a person possibly with a gun or they think may have a gun, they will uh, see the person, and they'll look, and they'll... Take the gun away. Yeah. They'll mm -hmm. stop, they'll frisk, and they'll take the gun away. And they won't have anything to shoot with. Right. I mean, how, it, how it's not being used in Chicago is, to be honest with you, to, it's quite unbelievable. And, you know, the police, the local police, they know who, who has a gun who shouldn't be having a gun. They understand that. Sure, and, stop, stop and frisk for the most, time is, uh, most part is where you give cops more power to quiz passersby mm -hmm. if Absolutely. there is reasonable suspicion. That's right, absolutely. And in New York, it took them, I mean, it, it, the numbers were unbelievably changed. I don't mean just a little bit. It was, you know, massively changed. And it became a safe city. It yeah. went from a, an unsafe city to a safe city. That's right. Well, well Mr. Trump, uh, moving to politics a little bit, yesterday uh, you must have been pleased to see a, a set of three new Fox News polls coming out of the battleground states of Nevada, North Carolina, and Ohio. We're going to put those numbers up on the screen for our viewers. Uh, in Nevada, you now lead uh, Hillary Clinton 43 to 40. In North Carolina, your lead is at 45 to 40. And in Ohio, a key battleground state, uh, holding at 42 to 37. Uh, your reaction to what appears to be a very strong surge in these very important states well it's great I mean I feel really good about that I just saw that last night and you know I've, I'm spending a lot of time in uh, North Carolina Ohio and Nevada and Florida different places we're doing well in Florida also and uh, really really good I think we're going to do well in New Hampshire I think that's going to be really good I was up there a lot and we seem to you know really resonate in New Hampshire it's a great place and so I think we're overall I think we're doing very well yeah uh, Mr. Trump, coming up on Monday night on all the channels will be the first presidential debate. Uh, I know in the media they've been talking about uh, whether or not the moderator, in this case Lester Holt, should he be a moderator and just ask questions? Or should he be a fact checker where he asks a question and then if somebody says something that he thinks wrong is wrong, then he's going to interrupt and try to correct the record. What would you like to see, a moderator or a fact checker? Well, I think he has to be a moderator. I mean, you, you're debating somebody, and if she makes a mistake or if I make a mistake, I'll, I'll you know, we'll, we'll take each other on. But I certainly don't think you want Candy Crowley uh, again. That was <laughs> yeah, she a, was wrong. Well, and she turned out to be wrong. I, I really, 
I really don't think you want that. That was a very pivotal mo moment in that debate, and it really uh, threw the debate off, and it was unfair. So I don't think you want that. No, I think you have to have somebody that just lets them argue it out. And, you know, I think there's a lot of pressure on uh, Lester. I think Lester's a very good person, a very good man. I think that there's a lot of pressure on him because of Matt Larry. You know, when I had the, the town hall, I guess you'd call it, or the forum Commander last week with Hillary, uh, it was, you know, I did well, and I had tough questions, but the polls all had had hers taking a drubbing on that mm -hmm. one. Now, uh, I will say, they went after Matt Lauer. I've never seen anything they like sure it. And I think my questions were harder than her questions, yeah. if you want to know the truth. And a lot of a lot of pressure is being put on Lester Holt. And, you know, it's a Bobby Knight-type pressure with the refs, okay? Bobby Knight would go <laughs> after the refs, and that's what they're doing with Lester Holt, which is, I think, very, very unfair. And a lot of people are watching to see whether or not he succumbs to that pressure. Yeah. There are two presidential debates. It's Chris Wallace and Lester Holt, right? Those are the last two. Uh, three and all. Three. The, the third one is the vice presidential. Uh, four. Four. Oh. No, we have, we have three Who's, debates. We have three debates. Chris is doing the last debate. Right. Who's doing the one in the middle? Uh, Anderson Cooper, and you have uh, Martha Raddatz. There you go. Oh, go. All right, so we got plenty coming up.